that you have no idea what's going on inside of my head. I have no idea what's going on inside of your head. We have no idea what's really going on inside of someone else. We all have very different perceptions of reality. And somehow or another, we think because we have two eyes and two ears and a nose and a mouth and the bodies that are similar, that we're experiencing the same external world. And we are not. <laughs> We start off all of our sit-downs with one question, and I'd like to start with you, Jill. Okay. How do you define yourself? How do I define myself? Um, I define myself as a living being, big as the universe. Mm. Do you need more, more than that? Yeah. <laughs> oh. You need more well, than a like, living being as big as the universe. I'm a living being, big as the universe. I mean, that's how I see myself. Right brain, left brain, then Jill Bolte Taylor, neuroanatomist, neuroscientist, um, you know, just just living human. I mean, I that's how, where I begin and end. I, I come in the present and uh, I leave in the present, and then then that's just how I am. It's pretty simple. When you see yourself yeah. as a living being as yeah. big as the universe, yeah, what does that look like? Well, it looks like this, 50 trillion molecular geniuses, <laughs> alive and well and inspired. And, uh, you know, I just see myself as this magnificent collection of cells and the circuitry of this wonderful brain. And, oh, my gosh, I can see, I can hear, I can speak, I can perceive this world. I have legs that allow me to take myself into the world so I can pick and choose who and how I want to be. And, and I'm right here right now. And then I got this amazing left brain that allows me to remember the past, so I become a bridge across time to the present moment, to the next moment. I mean, that's how I see myself. I, I like that answer, so I'll stick with her answer. Is a living being a as living big as the universe. As big as the universe. Yeah. I think that's amazing. And I think if we all identified ourselves that way or, or saw ourselves that way, um, wow, the things that we could do, which, of course, goes into what you were saying. Every time we have these conversations, it always comes back to gratitude. And I feel like gratitude is something that's so missing in our world, in our daily expressions. I mean, in our daily expression, we actually put gratitude into our morning meetings. Morning meetings yeah. So even today when we did this shoot, we had the whole the start of the day with everyone sharing something that they were grateful for. But what I find is like in life, in out there, in the world, I that gratitude is so not present. We raise our kids like um, oh, be grateful, be great, like telling them to be grateful, but we don't really train ourselves in an outward expression of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Very right brain. I mean, you have these two very different ways of perceiving the world, and the feeling, the experience of being in a right brain is a feeling of gratitude. And, and when, as soon as you experience your gratitude for, for being alive, for wiggling your fingers, people say, but Jill, what do I have to be grateful for? And I'm going, do your eyes work? Yeah. Can mm -hmm. you hear me speak? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do your teeth work? Yeah. Can you hear, you know, just the whole experience? Can you think, I mean, can you do this? Oh my gosh, there's a billion things to be grateful for. Yeah. But we 50. focus on yeah. 50 trillion <laughs> molecules of geniuses yeah. functioning, all yeah. that. Yeah. And then there's this tiny little piece that's missing, and then all the focus goes that. And and, and we lose our power. Our power is in our ability to experience gratitude and to be in the world. When we experience brain trauma, it's so easy to hook into the what have I lost? Because then I'm less than I was. And it's like, mm, I'm different than I was before. That doesn't make me worse. It's funny because uh, so many people define themselves as stroke survivor. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, we did survive a mm -hmm. stroke. But what do you do next? Mm -hmm. And that is the question, mm -hmm. deep down, like, we're not defined mm -hmm. by our stroke. No. Right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. And makes me think of, I like to say stroke thriver, Jill. Exactly. Do you like to say, yeah. I think Kyle yeah. does too, yeah. instead of stroke survivor. Mm -hmm. Because now I'm, I'm I, yep, that happened. Mm -hmm. That's right. in the past. And I am going to continue to thrive mm -hmm. in my life. And that has helped me see things in a different way, be grateful for certain, for all of life. and. And it empowers me instead of the survivor exactly. keeps me focused on that one episode. Somehow saying right. thriver doesn't, it moves me forward. Right. Right.
Well, I'm no longer the stroke. The stroke influenced what I am and how I am and what circuits are working, but overall, I am now what is working. And that's a living being as big as the universe. So who wouldn't want to live like that? Oprah called me a stroke triumphant. And I thought, absolutely, those of us who do exactly that, we experience it, we live with it, we do our best to recover from it, we thrive in it as the new being, and we embrace with gratitude what we still have. People say, Jill, how can you still be so happy after what happened to you? And it's like, I didn't die that day. And simply because I did not die that day, I live in a state of gratitude for the fact that I am still alive. Dancing around the brain. Dancing around the brain. Yeah, music does that. It's a beautiful thing. That's how I got my speech back. Oh, interesting. Uh, I, I gave a little talk at the sound shop. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a music salon here in, in mm -hmm. the city. Mm -hmm. And how, how music helped my brain. Mm -hmm. Listening I mean, to it, playing it, singing it. What all, kind of music? All of the above. All of the above. Yeah. So it to the just Spice Girls. Helped. Oh, to the ball. <laughs> yeah, it's the Spice Girls, after all. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. 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 How does uh, music mm -hmm. impact the brain? The, you know, one of the things about music is it's a very whole brain experience. So if you're listening to it, it's going into both hemispheres. If you're singing with it, you're in the language of it. So you're in your left brain. If you're feeling it, you're in your right brain experience having the whole thing. I mean, it is a big weave. So using music, in fact, many stroke survivors who cannot speak, they can sing because it's a different circuit. So it's a, a different way of communicating with people. Oh, amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Amazing. you just said it because kind of hit me. Yeah. So they can't speak, mm -hmm. but they can sing. Yeah, because it's different circuitry. Yeah. Yeah. What mm -hmm. you were saying before made me th in the power of, of gratitude and or what is that? Is a quote? I woke up this morning with two gifts. They were oh darn it. Anyway, I opened my eyes. They were my eyes. Something mm -hmm. with that, and it just mm -hmm. kills me because my stroke uh, mm -hmm. doesn't kill me. Mm -hmm. It uh, gives me life. It, it makes me feel grateful for that was my sight. That beautiful sight. reframing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and isn't that the key to yes. it all? The willingness yeah. to do exactly what you did is the reframe. Yes, the reframe. Yeah. And what we were talking about before, being aware mm -hmm. and accepting. Exactly. And then taking action and exactly. reframing. Yeah. But the, the gratitude for the eyes, the gratitude that I can't speak, maybe that I can sing your example. Mm -hmm. You know, we... we mm -hmm. See, that, that's an amazing thing, what you guys just did right there, that l little exchange. I don't think that anyone who's watching at home really gets what you just hmm. lived. Hmm. So if you could kind of explain what you just did with Claudia there. Hmm. Well, she reframed. Oh, right, well, by saying, it, and this, this phrase kills me. Oops, I was aware, no, don't say that, because I also believe that's our story. You know, our words are our story, and I don't want to talk about killing myself. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> no one does. And, and so I, we caught, I was aware that I said that, that doesn't work for me anymore, so stop it and rephrase it, reframe it, mm -hmm. so that it's being, so that it's a positive expression of, of, of how I feel about myself and then everyone else. Mm -hmm. Why does that make a difference, Joe? Well, you know, language has, words have energy. And there are words that, like killing me, okay, well, that's an energetic that we could all feel, even if it's at a subconscious level. And, you know, paying attention to the energy that you're bringing, not just to any space, but to your own conversation inside of your own head. And we are constantly speaking to ourselves through that left hemisphere. What responsibility are we taking for actually what are we saying to ourselves? What is the story that we're saying about ourselves? And, you know, it's so easy as a stroke survivor to be be in the, oh, my gosh, woe is me. I don't, can't do this anymore or that anymore. And I used to be here and now I'm there and I'm a lesser human being. And, and it's like, mm, no, that's my left hemisphere making these definitions and sticking myself in a world of perfectionism where everything is supposed to be perfect. And we are messy. Life is messy, and it's a big circular organism, and, and figuring out how to get that to work, what kind of energy are you putting into that vat of who and what you are, and what are you expressing in the external world? And, and if you're complaining and constantly in that negative zone, how are the people around you going to respond to you as your caregivers? And it's really important that we're kind to ourselves and our caregivers because we want them to bring us love. Can you speak about 
uh, and we had spoken about this, you and I, before, um, in terms of when someone is going through a stroke, and I think a lot of the audience will like to hear this, and they're, they're recuperating in the hospital, mm -hmm. let's say. Yeah. What energy, as you, you're, you're, that wonderful phrase, be uh, aware of what energy you're bringing into the yeah. space. People visiting, yes. how sometimes they think they're being helpful, but they're not. Could you yes. speak about that? Well, you know, when it, when, if I'm in the condition that I'm in, and, and I'm in, I've had a trauma, you had a trauma, you had a trauma, we're in there, we've, we've experienced trauma, we are, we're wounded, we're wounded animals. And for people to come in, um, it, we don't really know how to come in and be good visitors. To come in and, oh my gosh, Jill's had a stroke, uh, Claudia's had a stroke, I'm gonna go visit her, so I go in and, and I'm talking to her and I'm talking at her and I'm just zooming because I'm nervous because, oh my gosh, here's this wonderful young person who's had this incredible trauma and I don't know how to interact. So I just, in my anxiety, I just spew all that out of you and I stay forever. And it's like, because I think that that's a good visitation. And in the meantime, you're, look, you're over there going, oh my gosh, this is exhausting, you know? And it's really- Well, the brain's is, trying to heal. Yeah, and the brain's trying to heal. So it's more of a drainage instead of a fuel. So I encourage people people come in five minutes 10 minutes max come in love on us quietly come in hold my hand say oh my gosh you're gonna be just fine oh my gosh I've got your back so whether you're just getting up in the morning and taking responsibility for the energy you're bringing to yourself and into the world or whether you're going in for to visit someone who is in a wounded condition or anyone taking responsibility for the energy you bring because the brain, at least in the right brain experience, is receiving that information. And I love that because it's being aware of yourself, checking in, inner compass. You know, where am I right now? What's going on within me? Why am I reacting this way to someone? Why am I not taking care of, of, of how I speak to this person in the hospital bed who's recovering? Check in and, and be present. And be grateful and be loving. So with, with, with all that knowledge, mm -hmm. how, how do you live your life day to day? Conscious, completely conscious, completely conscious and aware. Um, conscious and aware of, of my surroundings. What am I doing? Yeah, I look at my brain as these two very different hemispheres. And am I being in my emotional self or am I being in a cognitive self? And, and what's appropriate in what moment? And who am I bringing forward and is that appropriate? When you walked into the room, mm -hmm. the, the studio, mm -hmm. I was just in awe. But <laughs> I felt the energy that you brought. Mm. And I don't know what it was, mm. but it was just like we just had instant mm -hmm. eye contact. Open and available. If yeah. I come in open and available, then that kind of encourages you. Think about it this way. At any moment in time, people have a power struggle for whose energy is going to win the moment. Mm -hmm. And if you come in, if I come in and I'm in a really bummer space and you're going, oh, okay, you know, and you like try to get me up out of it or whatever, or I come in and I come in owning my power, I'm happy, I'm available, then you have a whole different animal to deal with and dealing with me and how we interact. And so every interaction with every human being is, I'm coming in a space, you're coming in a space, and we have to find that moment together. So do I go to your space, you come to my space, or do we find a new space? But when you look at your life that way, and you become aware of that, everything changes. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, we're co-creating a moment. And don't we want to co-create a life? Yes. And we do that out here in the moment in language. We do our work at a neurological level, we become who we are in the present moment. So I can think about things in the past where I stuck my foot in my mouth. I can do absolutely nothing about that. And I can project ideas into the future, but until it happens, life happens in the present moment. Love happens in the present moment. Mm -hmm. Growth happens in the present mm -hmm. moment. So it's always in the present moment. When you start feeling yourself like hiking up into anxiety or, or, or fear or anger or whatever it is, you have warning signs that happen like this, you know you're ratcheting up and it's like, what do I do in this moment? Do I run that circuitry or do I shift and reframe that and have a new experience? And I have the power to do that and so do you. I mean, that's the beauty. We have so much more power over what's going on inside of ourselves than we were ever taught. You're saying so much, there's so much I wanna ask you. But you were saying something before about that moment when we're deciding which way to go and, and how the brain has to go through all of these 
that goes left goes to the right hemisphere, left mm -hmm. hemisphere. Before we make a decision, we were talking about. So I'm that? sitting here with three left-handed people. Yeah. So for, as left-handed people, people wild, yeah, which is like, very unusual, yeah. very unusual. What left-handed are you? I'm right-handed. We're uh -huh. three left. You three are left-handed. Are you all left-handed? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, I thought that. So my left hand. Was, my stroke was saying, go go left, go left. Yeah. You were an athlete. Yeah. Growing up. Yeah. And so you had a jock. So you had to you had to determine early which dominant hand you were gonna have. Mm -hmm. And so your brain kept saying left, 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 mm -hmm. better with left, go left, probably right leg, mm -hmm. but whatever. True? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And I think don't 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 we all have that experience, yeah. uh, especially if you're a left, yeah. at least in my generation, they were still taking the pencil out of your left hand and putting it in the right hand. Yeah. So you were young enough. You, it was later enough in society that they actually allowed you to be a left-handed. Mm -hmm. And the thing about being left-handed is if your your language is still probably in your left hemisphere. So language goes from your left hand, which you're writing with, into your right hemisphere, and then it has to cross over to get to your left hemisphere. So this is one reason why left-handed people tend to be extremely bright. It's because you're really, just even for the fundamental of language and writing, you have to use both hemispheres. Yeah, that was mm. fascinating uh -huh. when you, yeah, when yeah, you yeah. said that. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. you, so right-handed people only use one hemisphere when they write. Yeah, because they're going from uh, our language, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, is probably in your left hemisphere. So for right-handed people, it goes straight to the left hemisphere. If you're left-handed, you still have language over here, so you go from the left hand to the right hemisphere over to the left hemisphere. That's why I can't like learn Spanish <laughs> <laughs> or Portuguese or another language. Hmm. I'd okay. have to think about that. Okay. Yeah, I have to think about Ooh, that. I'd have to I think about that. Through. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to think about that circuitry. Just you, you just have yeah. to consider that every ability we have, we have because we have cells that perform that function. Whether it's a thinking function, an emotional function, or a physiological response, it's cells in there that are performing that function. And so if we have any kind of brain trauma or any kind of even normal life, if something goes offline, it can be inhibiting something else somewhere else, it releases that inhibition, and that then becomes available for new use. So it's just a bunch of cells, and if you consider looking at yourself as a collection of cells, instead of, oh, I'm a guy, I got a brain, no, you are actually 50 trillion beautiful molecular geniuses, and then you have these beautiful cells, and they're communicating with one another, and then you have, and, and every ability I have, I have because somebody's in there performing their function. And if the function, if the cells go offline, my fingers are still okay, but I might be paralyzed. It's nothing to do with this. It has everything to do with those cells. This is, I think, a great opportunity to talk about something that you talk about a lot, which is neuroplasticity yeah. and the ability of the brain to regenerate itself. Yes. Can you talk a little bit yes. about that? Yes, oh yeah. So we think about our brain cells as these things that are just in position, just like our bodies are all in position. And we have these this neural network that's connected. But the fact of the matter is they're like little, little, right now, live time, they are making one point, something like 1.8 million new connections every second. Mm. 1.8 million new connections every second. So how is it I can learn something? You could teach me the difference between this color pink and that color pink. And I'm looking at it going, it all looks like pink to me. And then it's like, oh no, but Jill, look at this. This has a little bit of speckle in it. And I'm going, oh, now my brain can differentiate between those two pinks. Well, that's learning. So I had the capacity in that moment to learn because the neurons are having new neuroplasticity, making new connections. So our brain throughout our lifetime is these groups of cells, the cell bodies remain in position, but they are reaching out and making completely new connections. So if you have any kind of trauma, you wipe out a communication, then over time, those cells, if they survive, can be rewired back into a bigger fold and you have new ability. It's beautiful. And this is pretty new information. I mean, the guy who termed this was back in the 80s. You know, it takes forever to get, to get new information into really our general understanding. If I want to create a new, a new uh, habit, yes. then I, I perform a function. 
athletics. I perform something. I perform something. I perform something. Then they learn. And something after 21 days of performing new function, they wire together and it is now a part of my circuitry. So we have the power to change what we are thinking through mindfulness. Think about different thoughts and allow that reframing, yeah. allow that to be, we repeat that at, over a 21 day period. We can create new habits, not just in how we behave and how we learn a new sport or we learn a new language or we learn a new something, but everything, every even a habitual thought, emotional thought, perception of ourselves in relationship to the other, it's just cells. So mm. by, by recognizing that we have all this power over what we're doing inside of ourselves, then we can actually create a completely different perception of reality through reframing because the thoughts then actually change the neurocircuitry underneath. And then it's ours. And then it is who we are. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> wow. Oh, I'm, I'm, so I'm, who we are. I find it so mind blowing. Oh, you didn't know is. that? It is. No, not really. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what mindfulness so is then, all about. Yeah. So then who are we? Yeah. Who are we? We are we are the life force power of exactly. the universe. We are this incredible <laughs> We're every energy. We're all of it. So you ask me who I am, and that's what I am. I'm this living collection of of life force power. That's all we are. And then it's like, okay, what do I want my wiring to look like? Who do I want to be? I have a burning question, you okay. guys. So you know when you're when you're with somebody and they're like, oh, that's just who I am. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just the type of guy that mm -hmm. It's never something, by the way, positive. Mm -hmm. It's always something that holds people back. Right. So what does that mean? That's not really true then. Well, that's he, a he story. Believes, that's a story. All, that he's convinced himself of. I mean, I think spiritually in our life, that's a whole, that's your story. So in that, so he's, he's raised in a certain way, this person, and maybe his mother told him that. So society has told him that. So you start to believe that. Then you have to unwind that. So you have to tell yourself a new story. So it's insecurity, not thinking that he's good enough. It's all coming from lack fear, opposite of love, love. Uh, Cause when we're in love, we don't just say, oh, it's just me. Or, you know, I know exactly, we all know who it is. And we all do, we all do that ourselves we too We all do sometimes. that ourselves, true. Not all of us, not me, of course we do. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, yeah, and that's my negative. And then, so it's that lack of, of accepting that I am, what is I'm the, the life force power of the universe. I'm the life force oh, power of 50 trillion molecular geniuses. Oh my gosh. There's no limitation in that thinking. In the thinking that you brought, the person has just be, put themselves in that box of limitation through the belief system. So I go back to thinking of so many lessons from Al-Anon, the wonderful 12-step program. They have a saying in, in Al-Anon, awareness, acceptance, action, which I've been talking about. Uh, today, I have to be aware of myself somehow to make a change. If I'm just not aware that I'm doing anything, that's where it's tricky. So, so, so hopefully that if I'm the person who's not aware at all, someone will be telling me, hey, you know, whether they're saying it in a nice way or not. So even if I don't agree with what uh, their constructive criticism, uh, hopefully it will land somewhere that I'll go back that night or the next day and go, why do I do that? What's going on with me? Was I angry? They also have a great saying in Alan on Halt. Am I hungry, angry, lonely, or tired? <laughs> and it's, it's brilliant. It's, it is. Because half the time when I'm hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, I'm a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And so, ew, I don't want to be with me. Why do you want to be with me? Marianne Williamson has made the, her career talking about A Course in Miracles, my, one of my favorite books, the classic tome, all about forgiveness. It's your inner work. It's the work that you do on yourself to keep yourself grounded. We're all connected. There is no separateness. Go inside. You're aware of yourself. You change your thought process. You change your actions. Your world around you, around you changes because now I'm accepting myself more and loving myself. And so I can love you much more mm -hmm. at work, at home, mm -hmm. in the street when someone is rude to me. It's not about me. Let me forgive. And how can you find forgiveness when someone is really hurting you? That's really tough, but then you have to come somehow from forgiveness will set you free. Well, that's what I think we are doing that. I, I, I believe so. But to do what, it everything, consciously. Everything that you're saying, yeah. like, I'm just like, you think so? yeah. like, this is what I say every day. Like, I'm like, like yeah. tell yeah. it up from yeah. the mountain. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? exactly. But it, yeah. <laughs> it's so, so amazing. I think I, while you were talking, I just realized like fear. Mm -hmm. Fear is what stops people from being open and available. Yeah. Like walking into a room with 15 people you've never met, yeah. open and available, mm -hmm. that takes so much courage. 
Sure, absolutely. But then, okay, depending on what person's pa experiences are in the past of walking into rooms with 15 or more people that they don't know, so you pull on past experiences mm -hmm. of success, right? So it's not always that it takes a lot of courage, but it takes, or yeah, sure, it does take courage, which is hard, right? Uh, but why, why, why is it that I, when I walk into a room, like some days I'm like totally confident, and I, I, I was like, all right. Which girl is going to go out with me? And then, and then, other days, what? Such a dude. <laughs> dude. Such a dude. Such a dude. Please continue. Well, I'm yeah. feeling that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> so, uh, am I blushing? <laughs> we all are. <laughs> but some other, other days, yeah. I'm. Uh, I walk into a room. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care, yeah. like, about my stroke. I, I, I tense up a little bit, mm -hmm. and I'm just not mm -hmm. available. Mm -hmm. Like, why is that? Mm -hmm. You're running a different circuit in your brain. It okay. really is that simple. So You're how running. Do I change it? Well, you feel... Wake up a different time? No, feel what, feel what it feels like. Feel what it feels like to feel that fear and know who that person is inside of you. Know him. You know him. You've been him ever since you were a little guy. What is that part of you? And then the other part of you, that's a different circuit inside of your brain. It's an di actual different group of cells. So I personally, I, I, you know, if I feel any kind of anxiety at all, I consciously do what I need to do in order to shift myself into my right brain so that I can walk in peaceful, calm, open, and available. Yeah. Because if I walk into some kind of an environment and I'm not open and available, then I'm not open and available, which means I'm missing that experience. And mm -hmm. I want to experience it. So I just wake up to the reality of who are these people? These people are life force powers of the universe. And if I come in and I appeal with curiosity to your life force power of the universe, then boom, you become that guy. I get to be that gal. You get to be that gal. And oh my gosh, we're going to have a completely different conversation than if I'm in, oh my God, you know, I'm sitting next to a supermodel. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's a choice. Where's the one? <laughs> you know, but that's true. It's just a conversation yeah. inside of your head and different groups of cells. And it's like, she's a great human being, but I'm 50 trillion molecular geniuses showing up. So why not, you know? Wait, wait, Absolutely. she just called me a life force. Power of the universe. Power of the universe. You yeah, are a life force power. power of the universe. That's what you are. Oh, so <laughs> Thank you. That's what guy. you yeah. are. Oh, you walk in, owning you. your powers, being the life force power of the universe, and who doesn't want to walk up to that dude? You'll have all the girls coming to you. <laughs> Let's simplify your life for okay. you. Yeah. Right. And even better, if you walk into a room being the life force power of the universe that you are, what you're going to attract is another life, life force, force power, power of the universe. universe. It's, it's true. true. That's, that's like right. attracts like, oh, that that's is right. so good. Why it's does so like true. attract like? Well, well you know, if I'm in a great space, why do I want to be with a bummer? Right? I mean, really, if I am, if I arrive as the light of life of what I am, and I see that sparkle in your eyes, don't I want to come to you with curiosity? And then you come to me with, me with curiosity, and all the judgment and all the harsh stuff that falls aside, and then we become really curious about how do we create something beautiful together? What's next? How do we bring the best of ourselves together to create something that's meaningful? Because that's what we're here for. Sure, we have great circuitry that is self-doubting and, and, you know, we all can be in a bummer and, and we can all have negative judgment and we can all, we can do all that. That's circuitry inside of our brain. I know what that feels like in me. Yeah. You know what that feels like inside of you. We've had stroke experiences. So gosh knows we are not the, the full power force what we used to be. And then we can look at ourselves then as less than what we used to be or we can say, okay, that inhibition's gone. What are we now? Now, what advantage do we have? What insight do we now have? Not just into our own brains and how we are, but what do we get to give to the world differently? Because now we actually care about something else that has meaning for thousands. We've expanded into a different part of ourselves, a greater part exactly. of ourselves because of this episode. Ex we can pay it forward and and you know, shout it out to the world. See, and that's oh. the art form, oh, the but that's the art form. It is how do I take a perspective and reframe that in a way that is, I can actually view it differently and own that as what I am and who I am and give that 
to not just myself, but to other people who care about me and love me. What right. happened in that, in, in, right. in those eight years? Right. And what, what do you call, like, recovered? Right. Because, I mean, like, right. I call recovered for myself, you know, even though I have some limitations on my right side, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I've been recovered for quite a while. Right. And I'm, right. in a sense, still recovering. Right. You know, because I'm still learning. Right. On the morning of the stroke, I could not walk, talk, read, write, or recall any of my life. I was a, an infant. I was reborn. And yeah, me too. Yeah, I mean, it's just reset. Left hemisphere was gone, uh, and that's all I had. But I didn't die that day. I didn't die that day, and I was alive. And all I was was this ball of energy awareness, watching, experiencing, oh my God, I had sight. I had ears. It was like a potential for st overload and stimulation, and I had to go to sleep and sleep a lot in order to, to take care of that information processing. But I was alive. And then it was a matter of moment by moment could I differentiate between you and the space behind you. Could I even create a boundary so that, because to me everything was blended. And then it was a matter of circuit by circuit bringing back abilities. And, and that's how I looked at it, even, even at the beginning. So I decided I was completely recovered when I, for eight years I experienced myself as a fluid a fluid in a fluid environment, because I am. I'm this 98% or so water mass, so are you. We're just these like little bubbles floating around in space with atoms and molecules. There's really no definition between us. We're all just energy balls. But when I realized that I was a solid again, and that, oh my gosh, this is where you perceive I begin and I end, and I could see you begin and end there, and we're separate from one another, that's a whole different way of viewing the world. And it was like, oh my God, I'm back. And I have to say, I really liked being the fluid because in the fluid, I was just a big ball of energy, big as a universe. So, you, you know, for me then to come back and relive life like a normal person, I made the agreement with myself that I would recover enough to be as normal as you needed me to be in order for me to be able to have relationships with you and for you to perceive me as a normal person. But you have no idea what's going on inside of my head. I have no idea what's going on inside of your head. We have no idea what's really going on inside of someone else. We all have very different perceptions of reality. And somehow or another, we think because we have two eyes and two ears and the nose and the mouth and the bodies that are similar, that we're experiencing the same external world. And we are not. We are not, yet we are all the same. And that yet ACIM, we are all of course, the same. Miracles, that we, is and, exactly and, and there right. is no separateness in the divine. Right. I use God freely, but I'm not religious, but spiritual. But we can say the universe, the, the Jedi force, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, we are all one, and you experience that yeah, exactly. in that moment of just floating yeah. around in the in the Eight right years. Brain. I got to experience that, so I'm really clear that that's who we are, and helping other people recognize that you are that life force power, you are that 50 trillion beautiful molecular geniuses. So how do I define me? I see you as the exact same thing I define me as, and that's what I reach for when I reach for another human being. I look for that piece of you because that way then it's like, wow, what an explosion. <laughs> so we, we traveled across country. When we came back, we really defined what the stroke of genius really is. Mm -hmm. It's that moment mm -hmm. when you choose how you're gonna live the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And you talked so much about choice. Mm -hmm. And I think that most people don't feel like they ever have a choice, mm -hmm. ever, in life. Mm -hmm. And you have this complete opposite perspective, mm -hmm. which is that everything is a choice. Everything is and a choice. everything is your choice. Yes. Pretty much everyone we've spoken to that's survived through a traumatic life event mm -hmm. has been able to pinpoint, yeah, mm -hmm. there I was. Mm -hmm. And I just said to myself, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to do this now. Mm -hmm. And you talk about how that's every moment. It is every moment. But I, I was given a choice, you know, I, uh, to recover or not to recover. Can yeah, you? what was that conversation like? That conversation went like... I am in incredible blissful euphoria. I am as big as the universe at one with all that is. Wow. But I'm still alive. And because I'm still alive, I can exist in this form for eons of time because I was in good physical condition. 
as I am. I didn't die that day. Ultimately, when I die, I get to be this. I'm still alive. And if everyone else knew, if I could communicate to other people that this experience of bliss and euphoria is always there in our right hemisphere for all of us, what a different world that would be. And that was my motivation to recover. Mm. You are, we are as big as the universe. There's this circuitry that just confuses us and gives us language and takes all that and defines it into little bitty pieces so that we can break it apart and communicate with one another and have an experience together. We are this piece of love and openness and beauty and expansiveness, and we are all connected to one. And then we have a little group of cells in our left brain that says no. This is where I begin and where I end. And as soon as that happens and I have language which takes an understanding and defines it and differentiates information, we can communicate with one another. But that is not who we are. Those are skills. A Course in Miracles. We are connected. We are all. We are all just energy beings having an energy experience here. Boom. Wow. So what am I? I'm the life force power of the universe and 50 trillion molecular geniuses. And so are you. Um. Um. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're amazing. Whether I can't see, whether I got a big blind spot, whether I have an arm that doesn't completely work, whether my brain's only part of it's working, who cares? Don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you do have. Celebrate your lives. Celebrate your life. Celebrate your life. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. We got a whole dance. Oh. Are we doing that? Are the, we doing that? Yeah. <laughs> we are the life force power of the universe. Yes. 50 Amen. trillion, really 200. Much. 50, 200 trillion molecular geniuses. Wow. Wow. Oh, 200 trillion yeah, in cause, this, cause at this right table. Here. At yeah, this table. Yeah. Right. Oh, oh, my gosh. Imagine. Yeah, and we are each our own neural networks, and now we're all connected. And oh my gosh. Oh my the gosh. The potential. The power. Better than the adventures. Exactly. <laughs> 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 <laughs>